What if I told you that a small startup in China just caused an 18% drop in Nvidia stock price this Monday? And they did it with all of just 6 million worth of computer chips. That's pocket change in the world of AI. Most advanced AI models run on these specialized computer chips made by a company called, as we all are familiar with, Nvidia. DeepSeek really shook up the internet this week. Now, here's the thing. AI chips are really expensive, and until now, everyone thought you needed tons of them to build good AI. For context, many companies use thousands of these chips, which can cost tens or even hundreds of millions of dollars. Here's where it gets interesting though. DeepSeek claims they only needed about 2,000 older NVIDIA chips to build their model, which cost just about, I think it was around $5.6 million. That's like saying you built a Ferrari using Toyota parts. And if that sounds too good to be true, well, some people might think it is, which we'll get to later on in this video. There are reports that DeepSeek actually has over 50,000 newer, more powerful chips. But before we get into that, we need to understand what makes their AI so special? Why is it everywhere on the news? Aside from the price. What makes DeepSeek different is how their AI learns. Let me show you something. Imagine you are a kid and you see a hot stove for the first time. What happens? You touch it, you get burned. And you learn really quickly not to do that again. This is what's called pure reinforcement learning, learning through trial and error. And that's exactly how DeepSeek taught their AI to think. And now other companies do this as well. I know OpenAI uses this method a lot. DeepSeek seems to have pushed it further than anyone else, which is causing a really big uproar in the media. It's basically like they found a more efficient way to teach AI how to learn from its mistakes. Okay, but before we go further, we need to talk about who is behind DeepSeek. What, what, who's creating this? And this, I think, in my opinion, is where the story gets really interesting. See, DeepSeek was founded by this guy here, Liang Wangfeng, who previously co-founded one of China's top hedge funds called High Flyer. And this fund isn't just any investment company. They're actually specialists in AI-driven trading. And they already have a massive or own a massive cluster of AI chips, which is something we kind of need to talk about. So this founder is not new to the world of AI. He is very savvy when it comes to both business and the AI side, which I found just a really interesting as a side note here. Now, there have been a lot of reports that have found that DeepSeek's AI gives inaccurate answers almost 83% of the time when asked about news. And here's the thing, something I found really interesting. It refuses to answer almost 85% of questions about China. Now, this might be because of government censorship. I mean, after all, this is still a Chinese company operating under Chinese rules. It's not a North American company. So that's something to keep in mind too, but it is very fascinating as you start playing around with it. There's a lot of current controversy that has come out of DeepSeek, and I think that's why it took me a little bit to make this video. I I saw so many people making videos on DeepSeek the minute it was released and the media got a hold of it and ran with it. And I really didn't want to be one of the first to report on it. And here's why. Oftentimes when something comes out initially, we only get part of the story. And I didn't want to report or share my thoughts or tell you something that was only half true. So I sat on it. I watched, I watched as so many people created videos on this topic and so many things have come to light since even Monday when, I mean, it's Thursday today as I'm filming this, I waited till the last minute to film this. So many things have come to light as to potential controversies that is now happening, happening or the curtain is getting pulled back, potentially, potentially. And I say potentially because we don't know. We don't know if these claims are true, DeepSeek is making or not true. We don't have any proof at this moment. But here's the thing, OpenAI is claiming that DeepSeek might have used OpenAI's own models to train their AI which is kind of like copying someone's homework, but making it look different. So what exactly does this all mean though? Here are five main things to know. The race to build better AI isn't just about raw power anymore, it's about efficiency. Number two, the attempt to slow down China's AI development through chip restrictions might not be working as well as we planned. And number three, new learning methods like pure reinforcement learning could be changing how we develop AI. Number four, being open source might be becoming more important than being secretive. I mean, you can go and look up Deep Seek's Deep Seek. I have such trouble saying that code online. And number five is the real competition might not be between companies anymore. It's between countries and their approach to AI development. And that's what makes this moment so interesting. I mean, we've even heard so many different leaders call this it. AI Sputnik moment, which is referencing when the Soviet Union launched the first satellite into space, shocking America and starting the space race, which 
really changed everything. So the question is, will this moment change how we approach AI development in the West? Because maybe the real story isn't about deep seek at all. Maybe it's about how we've been thinking about AI development all wrong. Instead of trying to keep our AI technology secret and controlled, should we be making it more open and accessible? That's the debate that's happening right now in North America. The next few months will show us which approach wins, whether it be China with open source, North America, we're a bit more closed source with this. But one thing is for sure, AI development isn't just about who has the most powerful computers anymore. It's really about who can think differently about AI and how it learns and grows, which I think is really fascinating because it's a wake up call to our scientists and researchers or not even probably, that's probably the wrong term, not those individuals, to our governments and our leadership of what is possible with AI, how we are thinking about it. And I think sometimes we get in this bubble being in the West thinking that we are the best at everything or that you know no one can beat us. And although there's a lot of controversy right now with DeepSeek, I think one thing that it did do is push us to really be forward thinking again, like when first AI first came out, have that kind of spark to think differently about how we are building things. Yeah. So it's gonna be very interesting to see. When I was initially going to create this video, I was going to actually show you how to run DeepSeek locally. I shifted into more explaining what it is, why it's a big deal, where it's going, a bit of the controversy around it, because I do not feel educated enough to know what is happening with my data. I know it's running locally, but I don't know what's going on behind the scenes. I just still have a lot of questions using it, so, I chose to, for this video, not use it and make a demo and rather just talk about it. And I'll let you decide if you wanna run it locally. I mean, there's so many tutorials online you can follow at this point that it'll be very easy to do so. Maybe I'll even link a different Medium post that I was going to use to follow along and share with you different ways to, to run DeepSeek locally. I just think there's still a lot of unanswered questions as to where it's headed and and what we're gonna do about it. But I think one thing is for sure, which is deep seek. This is going to be a really big moment in our history where it changes the evolution of the progression, the roadmap of AI and where it was headed versus where we're probably going to have to head now if we want to stay ahead of other countries. Anyways, I'm Canadian, so I'm like Switzerland neutral in all of this, but I find it very fascinating. Thank you all for watching this video. Make sure to leave in the comments your thoughts on DeepSeek, where it is headed. Will you be using it? Do you use it? Have you ran it locally? Let's start a good conversation there and I'll make sure to answer all of your questions and comments. Oh yeah, hit the subscribe button for more tech news, coding, future tech, AI, all the good stuff. I'll see you all soon. Thanks everyone.